Hello from Australia. My name is Olga and I'm completely blind. And today I would like to talk about something very important that is healthy and balanced relationship with your partner, in particularly if you or your partner have a disability. Uh, it's relevant for both those who are already in the relationship and for those uh, who will be at some point in future so you can avoid uh, those mistakes that I have been making and to be honest still making I'm not perfect and uh, I'm just going to share my experience so you know you are not uh, watching a professional psychologist but I do find uh, the tips I'm going to share helpful so tip number one is spend meaningful time outside the house both you and your partner um, for example it's something you enjoy it's definitely not grocery shopping it's definitely not taking your child to school it has to be something you love doing and uh, if you struggle doing it independently don't involve your partner for your help for the help uh, think about someone else outside your family uh, who can help you get in there or completing your activity uh, it could be a support worker uh, it uh, could be a friend or let's say if you want to go for a run or for a walk it could be a volunteer from achilles organization which is a worldwide organization uh, like my husband loves playing golf I do not accompany him to golf even though he tried several times um, to convert me to that game um, I say no that's your time I'm not interested um, uh, whereas I really need um, some time to myself when I do for example running or going for a walk you know obviously I could do that with my husband as well like go for a nice long walk and we do do that uh, but sometimes you need that me time when just you and uh, the time when you can clear your mind um, you know just uh, relax a bit um, you both have to do that on a regular basis at least once a week um, maybe even more like definitely my husband and I uh, do something we love separately more than once a week and it's really good it's really good for the relationship as important is it to spend time on your own um, as important it is to spend time together but again it has to be meaningful time uh, once a week would be lovely to go on a date um, so uh, we try to go uh, to lunch once a week with my husband um, and at that time you know we're not talking about kids we're not talking about work we're not talking about anything stressful or mundane uh, we try um, you know to be sort of like dating again <clears throat> And it's very important. It's uh, something every couple should do on a regular basis. Okay, tip number three is become independent as much as possible or make sure your partner, uh, if he or she is the one who's got a disability, become independent as much as possible. Instead of doing something um, for her, for him or getting someone to do something for you, say no i need to learn how to do it independently i know it takes time but in the long run it's really worth it so think about things you're a bit slack with um, that you could learn to do by yourself but you sort of find excuses with your disability or think you can't do it but the truth is you can do actually a lot of things probably more uh, than you are doing independently so mm, there are some situations when my husband would be still here 
was next to me doing something, um, let's say on computer, and I need um, to read the recipe, let's say on the package. Um, I pick up my phone and I call a volunteer organization called Be My Eyes, and uh, someone is reading to me the recipe. Um, and sometimes my husband would go like, why did you not ask me? Well, because, you know, you are not my carer. You're my lover. You're my husband. You know, if I was sighted, I would be able to read that recipe and a hundred other things like that. I don't want to burden my husband with things that I don't necessarily need to burden him with. Yes, of course, there are lots of situations when I can't help it you know, to take a child to a sport or um, some, I don't know, things that involve driving um, when it's just, you know, it's doable, but just so inconvenient for me to do it. Um, I think back on my first marriage and I just didn't really prioritize my independence and even though my husband was also visually impaired he could see quite a bit more and it was his job you know to pay the bills uh, to go to the shops um, you know he did a lot of cleaning and stuff and i could see that uh, he grows a bit uh, sort of like burdened and it shouldn't be like that we actually can do heaps of stuff um, and also, uh, I would say that it's important, like if you see, yes, there are quite a few things that you need help at the moment with, um, maybe try to sort of compensate that by maybe giving a nice massage, you know, something special, uh, something that shows that you do appreciate um, your partner's help. Tip number four that is don't be a complainer you know if you are in a long-term relationship it's you know it's so clear that you struggle with certain things you don't need um, every day to remind your partner about them oh you know I had this and that happened to me and it's like that every day of course uh, he or she is there for you when you really need to share your frustration but you know he is not a punching bag he is not that pillow you cry in every day you know of course there will be times when you sort of come up and say i really need a big hug i had a tough day and then probably it would be his call to say oh what happened tell me and you you know let's say computer was playing up at work and you got really stressed about it but then you know next question obviously is like and how was your day you know just because you or he don't have a disability um, doesn't mean they don't uh, can't have a tough day so it has to go sort of both ways tip number five never stop growing um, it's not only education but it involves any area of your life uh, and you can grow in so many different ways it could be setting goals in fitness and sharing your achievements with your partner and sharing the joy um, together it could be achievements um, uh, in some social work uh, but of course education is a really good one too um, it's important to show that you're not stagnant that you're moving forward that you're positive that you you know it's good when your partner is able to motivate you you know you have something to look up to and uh, that's how she or he feels about you you know if you're constantly just locked up in four walls and every day is the same you become boring whereas if you attend some clubs some groups um, you know you maybe from time to time attend some uh, seminars uh, you know you meet other people 
there are more topics you both can talk about. Um, there are new things that he or she can learn from you. It's just more interesting to be around you. So it's, you know, you don't get bored of each other. Tip number six. Uh, think about your first month of dating and how you prepared um, when you were uh, going on a date. Uh, it includes sort of your manly appearance. Uh, people get very complacent. People take for granted um, their partners if they are in the relationship for too long. And it may sound a bit out of fashion, it may sound a bit anti-feministic, um, but I do believe quite strongly that it's important to keep taking care of yourself, of your body. It doesn't hurt you to get back in shape if you need to or to stay in shape, you know. I don't think it's the right way, you know, okay, we got married, nothing can go wrong and people start eating at 11 p.m. those biscuits in front of TV and they grow huge, you know. And they say, oh, so what? You know, my partner has to love me as I am. And so probably he will. But, you know, how do you feel about yourself? Don't you want to feel sexy? Don't you want to feel like, you know, other men, women um, admire you and that way sort of keep your partner uh, on his or her tippy toes? Um, you know, like when, when you are attractive to other people, you are appreciated by your partner more so as well. Plus, when you feel good about the way you look, the way you dress, um, you know, that is translated into the way you feel as well and your health and everything. So it's quite important. And I'm definitely not suggesting like every day you have to dress up, blah, 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 to impress your partner. No way. I actually dress like a slob pretty much every day. I would wear very comfortable shorts and a t-shirt, both of them often black, just not to worry about uh, coordinating colors. Uh, but uh, Probably, if I don't know, at least once a week, uh, I would uh, put on a dress, some high heels and uh, makeup and uh, have some special time together with my husband. Uh, I do believe it's important. Tip number seven is do not tolerate any abuse. That is not on, whether it's emotional or physical abuse. Um, just because you have a disability doesn't mean that you deserve any different treatment than a woman or man in perfect health. No one is to bully you. No one is to tell you that you're this or that. You do not deserve that. You deserve to be treated with respect and admiration and love and care. Just because someone has to, uh, to help you more than they would um, you know, if they had a fully able partner, it doesn't mean that they can treat you with a bit of like annoyance or something. Do not tolerate that. In my first marriage, um, I got abused, even physically. Um, and I remember I said at some point, I will leave you. And at that time, we already had a little child. And my husband, my ex-husband, was like, uh, who needs you blind with a little child? And it actually did work in terms of um, intimidation. It did make me think, oh my goodness, really, who needs me? Um, you know, uh, being blind, you're worthless, you know, with a child, you're a handful. It just really, I put up 
with abuse, both emotional and physical, for way too long, uh, because I worried that uh, you know I would be alone, uh, I would be helpless. Um, and uh, guess what? I'm so glad I left that horrible relationship uh, because I'm so happy now. Uh, because you know, it's there are so many opportunities that come along our way and we may miss them just because we worry about something there is you know it's much better to be by yourself with someone who abuses you and surely at some point if you you know leave an abusive relationship you will find the right person it will definitely come do not put up with abuse in any shape or form you know if you need to get help really like official help there are organizations that can look after you i hope you enjoyed this video and found some of my tips helpful um, you know, if sometimes you have a tough day and you need an encouraging word, just shoot me a message. I would love to talk to you. And good luck with everything. Be loved and love people around you. And I'll see you later. Bye.